Well, hi again. I hope that if you've been watching some of my videos, you've enjoyed them. Today, I want to talk to you about a novel from Argentina called Don Segundo Sombra. We'll talk a little bit more about the background at the end of this video. I would like to just get right to the point. Like all of my other videos, I'm really just kind of scratching the surface and just mentioning some interesting things. I'm not really trying to do a deep, deep dive or do a whole lot of literary criticism. So Don Segundo Sombra, it's about this young boy, about 12, 13 years old, who lives with his two aunts who he can't stand. <laughs> and the way the story is told, from his perspective, he's the narrator, um, we're not sure that they can stand him either. So I don't really know who is at fault. I mean, the story doesn't tell us everything. He says they really don't seem to enjoy raising him since his mother died. And he thinks his father died too, but his father's still alive. He finds that out towards the end. But eventually Fabio, I mean, at age 12, 13, just runs away. And he decides, he, he runs across this gaucho as I mentioned in another video, Gaucho is a South American cowboy, rancher. His name is Don Segundo Sombra. Um, this particular Gaucho is kind of like a nomad because he doesn't stay in one place. With his horse, he just travels all over the Pampa. And the Pampa is a Spanish word for the great outdoors, the big, big, vast grassy land. Uh, way, way away from the city. And so it's a hard life being a gaucho, working with cows, working with horses, all of that's hard, but the young man uh, needed a livelihood or he needed a way to exist when he ran away. And so for whatever reason, I'm sure, I haven't read it for a while, but as I remember, there was a little bit of reluctance on Don Segundo's Don Segundo Sombra's part at first to take the young man on and have him ride with him, but he decided to, and it was a very hard life. He was with Don Segundo Sombra for five years, so if you do the math, that means he was not quite 18 years old when he went back, when he left him. So it was definitely the school of hard knocks, some danger, a lot of really hard work, and he was kind of disrespectful with Don Segundo Sombra, just like I would imagine he was disrespectful for his two aunts, but he was pretty much quickly put in his place. And at one point, one of the places where he and Don Segundo Sombra went, they would stay sometimes for a while, the different places they traveled to. But at one point, there was a young girl, I mean, probably early teens, that he kind of fell in love with. <laughs> Unfortunately, the role of a nomad or a, what is the word, vagabond? <laughs> I'm not quite sure of that word. A traveling man, rambling man, as that song goes. I mean, he wasn't really able to cultivate a relationship with her. So what brought the young man back? Well, his father was still alive and his father willed him something. I forget exactly what it was. If he willed him some land, but whatever it was, it was money. And I don't recall how he found out, but that's how five years later, Don Segundo Sombra realized or felt this was the best thing for the young man after all those years and he took him back. So I do wanna tell you when I read this novel, it was in graduate school and our professor mentioned a couple things to us that I thought were really very interesting. So, in the novel, over and over again, there was the sentence. I'll, I'll give it to you in English first and then in Spanish. We cross the river on horseback. Cruzamos el rio a caballo. It was just repeated over and over again. And my professor, Dr. June, C.D. Carter, I believe that was her name. It was either A.D. or C.D. I think it was C.D. Carter. 
She actually published an article about what this meant. It was repeated enough in the novel, we crossed the river on horseback, that she felt it had to mean something. And she actually wasn't the first one who thought about it, but as she explained it to me, a lot of people just assumed it had to do with the revolution. That is, the revolution when Argentina started to break away from Spain and become their own country. So she actually gave me a homework assignment. It was actually kind of an essay. I don't, I don't know if this was the only question, there may have been others, but she wanted me to explain what did that mean, cruzamos el rio a caballo? What's the importance of that? We crossed the river on horseback. And there were, there were actually only two of us in this class. It was a really small class. She didn't help us out with that at all, didn't even give us a hint. <laughs> I don't know how in the world she thought that we would be able to come up with the answer. I don't think either one of us did. So I spent a whole lot of time on that essay that I got for homework trying to come up with the answer. And then she just had a comment scribbled on my paper. It said, look up the word river in a dictionary of psychological terms. How in the world I would make that connection, I'll never know. But in any case, I looked it up. I, I got a dictionary of psychological terms in the library and I looked up river and it said that a river was a boundary or a border into a person's life. So when you cross a river, if it's a boundary or a border of a life, that meant as far as I could see, and she actually did corroborate this after I, I, I talked to her about it, that yes, the young man that came from those two aunts ran away with Don Segundo Sombra. He was crossing over into another life, another identity. That's actually, I think that's the more important part of what the Dictionary of Psychological Terms meant. A river was a boundary more for an identity than a life. So you know what he was before. And it may have been more than just like a new type of identity. It may have been like manhood because he was a boy and now he was becoming a man. So that was one thing that my professor told me. And then another thing that she told us in class she felt that there was a lot of imagery in this novel that was way too decorative. And I think she even referred to this as kind of a defect in the work, something that kind of harmed it a little bit. So she gave us one example. I'll read this to you in English and Spanish. Well, actually she asked us to look <laughs> and I don't remember, it's a long novel. I don't know if I found anything I think there were a couple examples where she thought the imagery was just too decorative, but the one that I do remember, so I'll read it to you in English first. And this was talking about Don Segundo Sombra's horse. A puddle below the horse's feet broke apart, screaming like broken glass. And quite frankly, I thought that was just beautiful. I mean, it may have been excessively decorative. It may have been maybe a little bit out of place, over the top, That I th she was trying to tell us all of that, but I just thought it was so beautiful. I love that imagery that I thought, well, <laughs> you know, probably one of the main reasons she brought that up, if you're gonna cover a novel for two weeks or even one week, eventually you're going to run out of questions. <laughs> I mean, there's just so many questions you can ask when you're meeting three hours a week. So in Spanish, it was un charco bajo sus patas se, despe se despedazó chillando como un vidrio roto. So those were really the two things that my professor, Dr. June Carter, mention that really stuck with me when I read this novel. And I will tell you uh, another thing that was repeated a lot, although our professor didn't really think this was that significant. Over and over again, I, I saw the, the phrase caminar, 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 which means walk, walk, walk. But of course, in this sense, since they were on horse book, horse book, <laughs> horse back, 
traveling all over the Pampa, it didn't really mean so much walk, walk, walk as it did ride, ride, ride. And I, I could actually kind of feel the momentum of them moving sometimes when I read that. Caminar, caminar, caminar. So you can actually, if you read about the name Don Segundo Sombra, if you want to investigate it on your own, you can find out a lot about it. But the character was based, I believe, if I remember correctly, off a real live person that the author knew named Segundo Ramirez. And Segundo means second. So that's kind of an unusual name. The full name Don Segundo Sombra means, well, Don is a term of respect that you use with a person in front of their name. And then Segundo is second. And then Sombra is shadow. So one thing I would comment about completely on my own completely divorced from my professor, towards the very end of the novel, the very, very end, you know, when he's kind of, well, Don Segundo Sombra is departing from this young man and going off on his own, on his horse, and the young man just watches him. And he had his horse too. I don't, as I recall, Don Segundo Sombra didn't take him right back to his family. He left him and the young man knew from there where to go, but he had his horse and he was just on his horse <coughs> watching <coughs> as he slowly went away. And he talks about a silhouette before he talks about a shadow. As Don Segundo Sombra got further and further away from Fabio, the, the narrator and the, the young man, he saw, he was started to see him as a silhouette and he saw a double silhouette Don Segundo and his horse. And eventually, of course, he just disappeared. If I re remember correctly, this was at sunset. So it really kind of, you can get kind of get a feeling for how emotional this was to the young man. But at one point he just said, Sombra, I repeated to myself. Sombra is that word for shadow, remember? So yeah, and he wasn't just talking sombra like shadow in the sense that it was a silhou silhouette and before you knew it, he was gone. He mentioned that in a way, he thought that Don Segundo Sombra wasn't necessarily just a man, but an idea much larger than a man, larger than life. He was an idea, I guess, the idea of the gaucho, which was there and well, there are still gauchos today, but maybe the young man thought that way of life wouldn't be around forever. But it was really very touching at the very end, the, the, the absolute end of the novel. He talked about how he felt sadness, and I guess he told his horse to go or uh, dug in his spurs to get the, his own horse to gallop off. And he mentioned the word desangrar, the desangrear, which has to do with the, the blood running out of you. It's kind of, I think in this sense, he meant like he kind of felt drained. So this guy, and he also mentions that he was like his godfather. So you can imagine how sad that was, how sad an ending. The man who after five years really had been like his godfather, and now he was going. So just to kind of give you a little bit of background on this, the author of this work was Ricardo Guiralves. If you take a look at my description of this video, you'll see his name, Ricardo Guiralves. And the last name Guiralves, over the U it has a double dot, kind of like what they say, the German umlaut, to let us know that it's pronounced Guiralves instead of Guiralves. And yes, it was published in 1926. And so it's one of the earlier Latin American novels. Although if you saw my novel about the 200th anniversary of El Periquio Sarniento, this is maybe a little bit more than a hundred years after that. So I hope that maybe, <laughs> I actually say this in almost all of my videos about Spanish American literature. I hope that someday you'll get to read it. And I can tell you for sure 
that there is an English translation of this one. And myself and my, my uh, classmate, as I mentioned to you, there were only two of us in the whole class. Both of us really benefited from the fact that there was a, an English version of Don Segundo Sombra in the library. <laughs> my classmate said, oh, there's just too many Argentinismos, like Argentinian expressions. Funny, I started to reread it within the last year, and it wasn't anywhere near as hard for me to understand, and I didn't really think it was so much Argentinisms or Argentinismos, as they say, as it was just a lot of slang Spanish. So anyway, Don Segundo Sombra, a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful, great story from the gaucho genre of Spanish-American literature.